Welcome to New Zealand. Thanks for joining me. And um, I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm not excited, but I'm kind of, ex- yeah, I am excited. I'm excited to show you what I've got today because today I'm doing something that's a lot different to what I've done previously. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. A few months ago, I put out a video and uh, Philip Sutton, who's one of my subscribers, um, suggested to me something. Um, give you some background on why what was suggested. Um, I was standing doing my intro to the video and uh, Philip noticed that I had a picture, a portrait on my wall. And Philip said, listen, I've noticed that this, you've got this portrait of this old guy on the wall and um, you know, just a suggestion, I think it might be really interesting if you try and do some portraiture work maybe with some, you know, one of these kind of earthy natural characters. And um, you know, I think it'd be a really good, good idea. And, and I agreed, said, yeah, it's something I've been looking at for a while but haven't kind of worked out logistically how to do it. So anyway, the, the, the thought stuck in my mind and I, it's been kind of stewing for a while as to how I can actually make it happen and um, um, I finally made it happen. So I'm kind of excited to present to you something today. So some background on my subject today. Um, the old man in the picture that uh, Philip mentioned is a guy, like I said, Trevor Kirk, and he owns a boat called the Taiho. And there's some history to the little boat and my uh, association with that boat. Um, a few months, nine months ago actually, um, I was walking down here in Waiuku um, at the local wharf here. And the local wharf is a disused wharf. It's um, at one point in its history, um, it was a very busy little wharf. It was in the early 1900s. It was used for shipping goods in from here and then they were shipped out to, to Auckland. So it was a busy little hub. Um, but over time, the, uh, the estuary or the river that leads in from the Manukau Harbour has silted up and for one reason or another the, um, the entrance to the wharf is, um, or the access to the wharf has become quite um, shallow, silted up and the channel's quite narrow so it's very difficult to get to it. So hence hardly any boats are there. So one morning I was walking along and I see this little mullet boat moored up at the, at the wharf there. Took some photos came back and thought to myself, oh, it'd be cool to get some video of this, some, some drone footage, which I did. A couple of days later, I went back down there and met Trevor, the owner of the boat. Got talking, and um, Trevor's a kind of a very weather-worn character. Typical sailor, he just, he's your stereotypical kind of old salty sea dog kind of a guy. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain him. Real, real laid back and nice guy. Got talking, and to cut a long story short, kind of built a little bit of a relationship with him. And I, you know, over, over the space of a, you know, nine month period, I've been down there, shared a few beers with him, taken a few pictures, um, and we've had a chat. And um, I said to him one day, um, I said, when the day that you sail out of here, I'd love to get a bit of video of you sailing out of here heading back up to Titoro, and he says, yeah, no worries. I'll let you know when I'm on my way. Um, so about three or four weeks ago, I was working out in the backyard here, and I got a text from Trevor, and he said, tomorrow the Taiha is going home. So um, I texted him back and said, I'll be there, which I was. So the next day, I went down there, I had a camera, went down and proceeded to film the event. But unfortunately, on his way out of the channel, because the channel is so narrow, narrow, um, they drifted out onto the onto the mud and got stuck. Um, and the tide here comes in very quickly, and it goes out very quickly. Um, so in a short period of time, they got stuck on the mud, and they had to wait on the boat till 3 a.m. the next morning, and then they waited till the water came back, and, and they carried on up the channel. Um, and then disaster struck again for a second time. Um, they got to Glenbrook and the rudder broke and they drifted onto the sand or onto the mud. And that's where it stayed for a 
about three or four weeks. They couldn't get the taiho out of the sand. Up until, I think it was yesterday, I got a, I got a call from Trevor saying, we finally got her out. Um, so they managed to get her out and they managed to get her back to the wharf at Ditoro. So previous to this, I'd, I'd, I'd said to Trevor that I'd like to kind of use them as a subject for my vlog and, you know, would it be okay for me to come up and uh, bring my camera, have a chat to him. Um, all this before they actually got stuck, actually. Uh, and by them getting stuck and stranded, it's kind of made the, the story a little bit thicker, a little bit richer. So how's it looking, Trevor? Not too good. It's um, worse than I thought it was. In 1896 it was built over in um, a place called Omar. I'm not too sure where it is, but it's somewhere between Walkworth and Wongaray, either Walkworth and Wongaray or Wongaray and Barbara somewhere <coughs> on the east coast. A place called Omar. Um, and I spent most of this time over there working as a mullet <coughs> boat. And then they came to Waiuku, or the museum bought off whoever owned it, and um, it was restored at Waiuku, but not done right. And then the lady Cecilia Houston bought it off the, off the museum, but I found out later it was only on a 10 year lease. And anyway, she rebuilt the boat. But um, I bought off, and then she took it to Clevedon, sorry, and it sunk at Clevedon, in the Clevedon River. Oh, it sunk at there. And, um, so it's been sunk a few times, eh? It's had a bit of water out. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, and um, she got it, taken it, pulled out of the water, and they took it up to Boat Harbour. But um, the insurance company refused to pay out on it and uh, I bought off her. So she your pride and joy, she? She was. She is? She still is. She still is, yeah. Okay. Well, I thought it was going smooth. Yeah. And then we had fine sailing until we got to Sandspit. Uh, a friend of mine was on the helm, he ran it up in the, the sand, we got stuck there, spent the night there waiting for the next tide, and um, then we came to, we're on the way to bringing it here, and um, easterly wind blew up, the rudder broke, and um, put us onto the mud. Yeah, you've had a bit of an adventure, right? Eh? Sure have, yeah. yeah. So tell us a story about you crawling out on the mud. Oh. Because it, be it, it was beached on the mud, eh? It was beached on the mud. We went out low tide. And um, as close as we could, we were about 100 metres from her. And I crawled, sorry, hopped in the mud and my gum boots. Gum boots went out of, out of the side in the mud. And um, so I went on my belly, it was too hard going on my belly, so I rolled on my back and just pushed my way through the mud and covered the 100 metres at least on the, in the mud, sliding out to her, but by this time the tide had come in and um, my mate was able to bring his boat into it, um, had a look and it was just too much, <laughs> yeah. A lot of work, 
all good day. <laughs> good things piped on. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, a fair bit of work went into that, so um, it's something I'd like to do a lot more of, and um, it's not the easiest thing to vlog, but I think it's worthwhile doing. And um, you know, I, I want to try. This is the kind of the path I'd like to go down with my vlog. Like I said, it's not as it's it's it's, it's easy to go out and do landscape photography, vlog, vlog it because it just it's accessible. Whereas um, when you get people involved, it's uh, there's a lot more work involved trying to get people to collaborate with you is difficult so um, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on uh, hopefully getting a little bit more of that type of content in my channel. Be interested to see what your feedback is and uh, if you enjoyed it or not. Um, also great to, f uh, to shoot film again and um, you know more film coming up and I'm just kind of thinking that this channel really the, the for the future the path for this channel really is, is film. Um, it seems to be what people are enjoying um, about my work. Um, it's what I am enjoying more. Um, it challenges me more. Um, so for the purpose of this vlog, I really am contemplating taking it 100% down the, the path of, of film. Um, tell me what you think. I don't know. I think I've got to go with my gut feeling, and my gut feeling is film is the future for me <laughs> with the vlog. But anyway, um, nice to shoot film again. Um, that's about it for now. Um, I've just got one more thing. Um, um, about a month or two ago, I put up my first limited edition print for sale, um, and it's gone very well. So thanks for everybody who's bought that print, and um, you know people are requesting more prints. Um, it's something that I probably will do more and more as I come up. Um, so this is my um, anyway. Cut a long story short, to cut to the chase, um, I'm offering my second second limited edition print. Um, and it's this one here. Um, this was taken um, on my trip down to Central North Island, and it's a picture I really like. Um, taken with my my ME, my Leica ME, or my M9. Uh, I'm going to be using this a little bit coming up too, I think, and I'm going to refer to this as the M9 because it really is an M9. Um, so taken with the M9 uh, on the desert road in New Zealand, and um, it's just a picture I really like. Um, it's not a black and white, it's a colour, but it's very monochromatic, it's um, yeah, it's just a picture I really like, I just like the feel of it. Um, it was taken on the desert road on uh, my second day as I was coming back from uh, my disastrous trip, or my ill-fated trip up to, uh, to, the, um, to the lakes. Check the, the video, There's, I'm going to put the video link here, you can check that video out and you know, get the full story, but uh, yeah, went down to the desert road, took that picture, and it's one I like, and um, printed that on, uh, is it like the German, Hallam Mule, some paper, it's uh, fine art paper, I'll put the, I'll put the details up uh, in the link below, you can check it all out, um, um, and find out the details, uh, fine art paper, A4 size, um, I'll ship that anywhere in the world for free, and it's, um, 
signed signed by me yeah check out the link below and um, if you want to purchase that print uh, you can do so by going to my website um, that's about it um, for this episode uh, again hope you enjoyed it um, thanks to Trevor Kirk and the Taiho for giving me some interesting um, content to share with you guys um, as usual follow me on Instagram uh, and on my social media um, pages links below for that subscribe please if you haven't um, really would uh, appreciate that um, share uh, like and comment on the video if you can also um, helps my channel out all the usual stuff um, I think that's about it until next time please take care come back again Hare from New Zealand. Goodbye.